Now, join Benoit Dajvi, co-founder and president of Product for Snowflake, to learn how Snowflake delivers a single, globally available cloud data platform. By now, you have heard our vision for the Snowflake Data Cloud and its enabling technology, the Snowflake Cloud Data Platform. In this webcast, I would like to talk specifically about the global capabilities of our cloud data platform, beginning with a look back at its making. This time lapse really starts in August 2012 when Thierry and I co founded Snowflake. At that time, we decided that the Snowflake cloud data platform would be built on top of the infrastructure provided by the public clouds. From day one, our ambition was to build a platform with unlimited elasticity, scale, performance, pay-on-demand model, and extremely simple to use. Initially, our goal was to run both data warehousing and big data workloads. At the same time, we also wanted to leverage the cloud to build a much better solution for either workload. So 2012 was really about defining the blueprint of this new cloud data platform. 2013 was about building the Snowflake team and all of us working nonstop to implement the Snowflake platform blueprint. By 2014, we already had a beta version of Snowflake used by some early and really brave adopters. But before going GA, we wanted to harden the platform and continue to invest in building more enterprise-grade features. Finally, in 2015, we went GA with our first Snowflake region, built in the AWS West region of the AWS cloud. A Snowflake region is really the building block of our global cloud data platform. And there is really a one-to-one -one relationship between a Snowflake public region and a cloud public region. I want now to spend a few minutes describing the architecture of a Snowflake region. The architecture of Snowflake region is designed to take advantage of the underlying infrastructure provided by the cloud provider. It is highly available, scalable, and self-managed. At a high level, it is composed of three fully decoupled tiers, scaling independently of each other. At the center of the Snowflake region is the Snowflake storage tier. Snowflake storage leverages the blob storage of the hosting cloud region. And what it means is that our storage layer inherits all the great properties of a cloud storage. It means very cheap, it has virtually unlimited capacity, it is highly available and durable. We also design our storage subsystem to support multi-petabyte table size with native support for semi-structured data like JSON. At the same time, we wanted to avoid the many trade-offs of traditional data lake storage. In particular, our storage layer enables sub-second response times for selective queries against petabyte scale stable without explicitly partitioning the data. We also fully support ACID transactions with very fast updates, deletes, merge operations. And finally, our storage is highly secure. Every data at rest is encrypted by Snowflake and key encryption keys are fully managed by it. The second tier of the architecture is the multi-cluster compute layer, which is fully decoupled from the storage layer. This layer is the way Snowflake runs any number of workloads in their own dedicated compute clusters, even if these workloads access the same underlying data. Dedicating compute resources for each workload has many advantages compared to running all workloads on the same large cluster. First, it is a very cost-effective model because compute resources are independently sized based on the need of each workload. And Snowflake only charges per second granularity with zero cost when a workload is not running. Second, this model provides unlimited scalability and elasticity since there is virtually no limits in the number of active clusters. This means one can run any number of workloads simultaneously without contending for compute resources. As an example, our large Snowflake regions can have many thousands of active clusters and we can grow much more from there. The last year of the architecture runs the cloud services for the Snowflake region. Cloud services is really the control plane of a Snowflake region and the interface to all external clients. 
For each customer account, the Cloud Services tier manages client sessions, metadata, transactions, query planning, security and governance, and many other services. It is also a very highly scalable tier without any scale limitation. For example, large Snowflake regions are supporting thousands of customer accounts and under hundreds of millions of queries every day. Initially, Snowflake Cloud region was only ported to AWS. We later ported it to Azure Cloud in 2018 and then to GCP just this year. We ported our Snowflake by building a cloud diagnostic layer, abstracting the specificity of the underlying cloud infrastructure. This way, the upper layers of the Snowflake software are completely cloud diagnostic. And the same applies to any application running on our cloud data platform. This aspect is very important since avoiding any cloud lock-in is one of the key benefits of using Snowflake. Let's now resume our time lapse from where we left it. In 2016, we launched Snowflake in Europe by adding a new AWS Frankfurt region. 2017, we expanded our presence to the US by adding another Snowflake region in Virginia. 2018 was another big milestone for us because Snowflake became multi-cloud with the introduction of two Azure regions, one in Virginia and the other one in Amsterdam, Europe. We also added two new AWS regions that year one in Dublin, Europe, and the other one in Sydney, Australia. In 2019, we added eight new Snowflake regions stretching our data cloud all the way to Asia. Four of these regions were added to the Azure cloud, Toronto in Canada, Singapore, Sydney in Australia, and four were added to the AWS cloud, Ohio in US, Toronto in Canada, Singapore, Tokyo in Japan. Finally, 2020 is another big milestone for us, because of the introduction of four Google Cloud regions. We have already added seven new Snowflake regions this year. Three GCP regions, Iowa in US Central, Netherlands in Europe, London in the UK. Two Azure regions, one government region in US East, Switzerland in Europe. And two AWS regions, another government region in US East and Mumbai in India. So if you think about it, Snowflake Data Cloud might soon count more region than any of the infrastructure clouds. However, our vision for the Snowflake Cloud Data Platform was much larger than just running our software independently in different cloud regions. Instead, we envisioned the ability for Snowflake regions to interact with each other to deliver global capabilities. Without these global features, data in our data cloud will be siloed like it is in the infrastructure clouds, effectively confining applications to a single cloud region. We also build what we call the global data mesh to link each of these regions with all the other ones independently of their cloud origin. The global data mesh is used by our platform to efficiently and securely move very large quantities of data. This now enables us to build global features which are by nature cross-region and cross-cloud. And we have already built a few of these global features. The first of these global features is organization and global account management. And indeed, it is common for an organization to be active in several regions of our cloud data platform, potentially in regions from different clouds. Hence, the organization will create one or more Snowflake accounts in these regions. Global account management makes it really easy to create and manage these accounts as one. A new type of admin role has been created for this, named the org admin. To get started with Snowflake, the org admin can simply go to the Snowflake home website to create the first account of his or her organization. This is really the easiest way for an organization to bootstrap their presence on our Snowflake cloud data platform. For example, the org admin of the Acme organization decides here to create the first account in the Snowflake AWS US West region. From this first account, the org admin can create new accounts in any region of the Snowflake cloud data platform using the just the create account DDS statement. Only the org admin can run this type of command. And of course, that admin can only operate on accounts belonging to his or her organization. Another global feature we recently introduced is database replication. 
It allows you to replicate a database between any accounts belonging to the same organization, even if these accounts reside in different clouds. Database replication has many use cases. One is global data sharing, which, is, which can be used to share data between two Snowflake regions. Once the data is replicated, it can then be shared locally inside that region. The other use case is to migrate an account from, from one region to the cloud to another region of the cloud. The last use case is for business continuity. In that case, Snowflake supports full failover of both data and client connections. Setting up replication only takes a few minutes, using two main SQL statements. One to create the database replica, and the other one to refresh the data of that replica. Refresh will fully replicate data the first time, after which replication is incremental. Data replication leverages the global data mesh. Replication speed varies, depending on the source and the destination region but we saw replication rates of up to 20 terabytes per hour. Last global feature I will cover is the Snowflake Data Marketplace, formerly named the Public Data Exchange. Our data marketplace is the place where data providers create listings to advertise their data. These listings are then displayed to data consumers when they browse the marketplace catalog. Obviously, Provider and consumer's accounts might be located in different Snowflake regions, maybe even in different clouds. Hence, the marketplace was made to be global, which means listing can now be published by providers to any Snowflake region. Also, consumer can request to have access to these listings, which in turn will notify the provider owning the listing, even if that provider resides in a different region. What it means is that all interactions between consumers and providers are performed through our global data platform, again using the global data mesh. This way, providers and consumers can discover and interact with each other, even if they reside in the different parts of the world and or are using a different cloud. On this note, I would like to conclude. The key takeaway of this webcast is that the Snowflake Cloud Data Platform is effectively one single platform for the world, built on top of the infrastructure cloud, where each node is a Snowflake region connected to all others via our global data mesh. This makes Snowflake Data Cloud one cohesive system transcending both cloud and geographic boundaries, enabling us and you to build amazing global and cloud diagnostic features. And of course, as you can imagine, we are only at the beginning of our global journey. Thank you.